Maple TA Lesson 11A Homework, question number 11. Uh, I thought I would go through this one with you just to kind of walk you through what I would do in my own personal if I was doing this question. The first one is A plus landscaping, uh, A plus landscaping company has a big job where they need 85 bushes and 25 trees. They need to compare the cost from two similar suppliers, Pinedale Plants and Sierra Shrubs. Last month, A plus landscaping placed two orders with Pinedale plants. The first order was for 10 bushels, bushes and five trees totaling $389.85 before taxes. The second order was for five bushes and two trees and totaled $174.92 before taxes. The bills from Pinedale plants do not list the per item price. A plus landscaping has an offer from Sierra Shrubs where similar bushes cost $17.72 and trees cost $42.66. So the next one is going to be identify variables and assumptions. Let X equal the cost of a bush and Y equal the cost of a tree from Pinedale plants because we don't know how much they cost. Identify any assumptions below that would not be helpful to A plus landscaping as they decide between the two suppliers and select all that apply. The first one, the ground at the big job has rocks that will be difficult to dig around. That's not going to be helpful deciding between the two suppliers. So we're going to say, nope, that's not, that's not helpful. The next one, either supplier will have enough trees and bushes for their next job. We're going to make that assumption, and I think that's a good one. We do need, uh, so it's not a not helpful. It is helpful. The next one is the prices of trees and bushes will stay the same at Pinedale plants. So that is helpful. We're going to make that assumption as well that nothing else is, so that is helpful. So I'm not going to mark that one. The next one, A plus landscaping will need to install a sprinkler, a sprinkler system to water the plants. Mm, that doesn't have anything to do with choosing between the two buyers, so that's not helpful information. And the last one, the trees and bushes from either nursery will thrive. That is good information, and I would like to make that assumption that those trees will not die as soon as we plant them. The next one, applying quantitative tools. Create an equation representing the cost from the first order of Pinedale plants, and then create an equation representing the cost from the second order of from Pinedale plants. We were told in number two that X is going to be the cost of a bush, and Y is going to be the cost of a tree, and we have some information up here. The first one is for 10 bushes and 5 trees, totaling $389.85. So I'm going to copy this into Word over here. And then we'll uh, put in our variables, x being the cost of a bush. So I'm going to do 10x plus, for and, we're adding five trees. The trees variable is y. Totaling means equal, there we go, $389. So that was just... Um, what's the word, <laughs> translating from English to our math sentence. The next one is our second order of five bushes, two trees totaling $174.92. Again, I'm going to copy and paste. The bushes are x, so we're going to do x plus two trees, trees being y, total means equals, and we have our two equations. Now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and copy and place, paste these into my answer over here. And also this one here. And I'm going to take off the dollar sign. I'm not sure if Maple TA will understand the, uh, the dollar sign in there. So we'll go ahead and take that out because we can interpret that ourselves knowing that we're working with money. The next one says, solve the system of equations to find the cost of one bush and one tree from Pinedale plants. How much does a bush cost from Pinedale plants and how much does a tree cost? So we're going to solve this system of equations and we have several different ways to do that. We can graph or we can do substitution. Um, let's go ahead and do substitution. That sounds good. So I'm going to solve this one down here for y and then we'll substitute it in up here. 
Another option we could do is solve for both of them for either x or y and then set them equal to each other. But I'm going to go ahead and solve this one for y. So we're going to copy this. Oops. Copy, paste. Okay, because I'm going to solve for y, I need to subtract 5x from both sides. And from this side, minus 5x. And then on this side, 5x minus 5x cancel out, and I'm left with 2y equals 174 and 92 cents minus 5x, or I can do negative 5x plus that. Um, just to stay consistent, I'm going to do negative 5x plus 174. Now to continue solving for y, I need to divide by 2 to get rid of this 2 over here. So I'm going to divide every single term by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and divide by 2. So on the left hand side, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times y is just y. So we've solved for y and that was our goal y equals, and then I have negative 5 halves times x, and then 174.92 divided by 2, let's type that in here, equals 174.92 divided by 2 gives me 87.46. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. Oh. Nah, we'll, we'll type it in. 87.46 plus 87.46. There we go. So now I can take this right here and substitute it every time I see y in this one. So I'm going to copy our other equation, bring it down here, and replace this y with what we have y here. So copy and paste. Now, every time I substitute, I always put parentheses around whatever I'm substituting in. So I'm going to put parentheses around that. Okay, so now I have uh, right here, this would be the distributive property. So I need to multiply by 5 into both of these. And since I already have that over here, I'm going to do this calculation right here. This times 5 gives me 437 and 5 times 5 here is 25 so I have copy and paste this here so 5 times 5 here is negative 25 halves and that's still being multiplied by x and then we add 437.3 and equals still, and we can take off the dollar sign since we're calculating stuff, 389.85 cents. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is combine my uh, like terms, those that have x, and get rid of the one that doesn't. So here I'm going to subtract the 400, 437 and 0.3 from both sides so that I'm left with the terms with the x's and those without the x's over here. So I need to say minus 437.3 from both sides, minus 437.3, and so on the left hand side, these will cancel or go to zero, so I'm left with just this part, 10x minus 25 halves x, and then on the right hand side, 437.3 is negative, and so I can make this negative here, and then I'm going to add that, so equals 389.85, and then I need to add the negative here, or we could have subtracted, which gives us negative 47.45. All right, so now we need to combine on the left by, uh, let's go ahead and find a common denominator. Since I have one denominator of 25 halves on the left, or the number on the left to make that also a denominator of 2, I'm going to multiply it 
by putting it over a 1 and multiplying both the top and bottom by 2. So 10 over 1, because that uh, keeps its value, and multiplying top and bottom by 2 gives me 20 halves, or 20 over 2, which if we were to simplify is 10, and that is that keeps its value. So let's go ahead and do 20 divided by 2, uh, and that is still being multiplied by x, minus 25 halves, still being multiplied by x, equals negative 47.45. Okay, so now on the left-hand side, I can add these uh, common denom or common fra fractions with common denominators. 20 halves minus 25 halves leaves me 20 minus 25 is negative 5 halves x and that equals negative 47.45. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> So now I need to continue solving for x, and x is being multiplied by this negative 5 halves. To uh, remove that negative 5 halves, that means I need to divide by negative 5 halves on both sides. And so we're going to divide by negative 5 halves, and also on this side, divide by negative 5 halves. Now what we have is a complex fraction. On the left hand side, negative 5 halves divided by negative 5 halves is 1. It's like 5 divided by 5 or 2 divided by 2, whatever you want to think about, as long as you know that it's the same thing being divided by the same thing. So it ends up being 1, which gives me, leaves me with 1 times x or just x. Then on the right hand side, um, I could go ahead and do this in Excel, or um, I can try doing this uh, by hand, which would be negative 47.45. And because I have a complex fraction, we, uh, we don't like to divide fractions and end up with this big mess. So what we do is we multiply by the reciprocal. So I need to multiply this by negative 2 fifths. All right, so if I, since I have this over here, let's just do this, equals negative two-fifths times 47.45, and our answer is x equals 18.98. Now to find the y, I just go back to my equation here that I solved for y, and substitute x right here. So I'm going to copy this, come down here, and substitute, and I always put parentheses around whatever I'm substituting so that I don't uh, miss any order of operations like we did up here where we would have had to do, or where we did do the uh, distributive property. All right, so now I'm substituting in my uh, 18.98 and uh, we'll just come over here. And since I have Excel already 18.98 right there, I need negative 5 halves times, and cell reference, and then add, and I already have the 87.46, so I'm going to cell reference that too, makes it really fast. And so y equals here, y equals 40, .01. There we go. So now I know how much they're charging per bush and per tree, and I can put that number here. How much does a bush cost? Um, if you get confused, don't forget x is uh, representing the cost of a bush. So we'll come over here. X is 18.98, and that's the bush. And then again, tree. We uh, we let y substitute or be the represent the cost of a tree, so forty point one one penny, and then uh, the next thing is what is the total cost if A plus landscaping purchases eighty five bushes and twenty five trees from Pinedale Plants? So I can go ahead and do uh, eighty five bushes. Uh, We'll, we'll type it up here, 
just so that we have 85 bushes times 18.98 and then we want to add that for uh, add the trees we have 25 trees and multiplying that by the cost of tree is 40.01 and that will equal our total here and because we have Excel I'm just going to copy and paste it in here uh, it's a little delayed sorry and I'm going to need to move the equal sign to the end the other end and tell Microsoft Excel to multiply here even though we know that we need to tell Excel to do that and make sure I get an equal sign press enter and this is our cost for 85 bushes and 25 trees and let's type that number in here we might be able to copy and paste that let's try copy paste yep it worked great uh, the next one is the total cost of a plus landscaping purchases 85 bushes and 25 trees from Sierra shrubs and we were given that information here Sierra shrub was $17.72 and $42.66 and because we can I'm just gonna copy and paste that into word over here and we uh, bushes we wanted how many bushes 85 bushes so we need to multiply that by 85 and add it to how much we're gonna buy for trees which is 4266 and we wanted 25 trees so we're gonna multiply that by 25 and again I'm going to just copy and paste that into Excel and we'll do that here equals uh, paste take out the dollar sign so it doesn't confuse Excel and make sure I have everything in there have multiplication press enter and we get 2572 so I'm going to put copy and paste here so that it saves me a little bit of time and because I'm dealing with money I'm going to uh, round to the nearest penny so I'm going to put a zero on there and then move to the next one which supplier do you think a plus landscaping should use well uh, this one is 26 or 2613 this is 2500 so I'm gonna say let's go with the uh, the cheaper one so Sierra shrubs let's go with number two the next question if Sierra shrubs offers a plus landscaping 10% off their order price what is the new total price of ordering 85 bushes and 25 trees from Sierra shrubs round to the nearest penny so here is my total price for Sierra shrubs 10% off I have two ways of doing that I can either find 10% and then subtract it or the tricky way is if I'm um, getting a 10% off that means that I am going to be paying for 90% of the total so I can just multiply this by 0.9 or 90% so that uh, and then it gives me the total right there so I'll, I'll do it both ways just to show you so right here I'm gonna do 0 0.9 times the price and that gives me my answer for 10% off and I can copy and paste that here or I can uh, I told you you could take off 10% and then subtract it so this equals if I want to find 10% whoops one decimal <laughs> 10% or 0.1 times the total that tells me how much I need to subtract off so then I can do my total subtract the 10% off and those two should match 2315 so uh, you have two different ways to find that 10% all right the last question should a plus landscaping change their decision no it's still the same we would like to stay with the cheaper one and we already chose the cheaper one so it uh, it looks good uh, just to double check we can do how did I do and just verify that everything looks good all right good luck on number 11